Welcome. Today we shall be looking at lumbar puncture. A lumbar puncture, also known as a spinal tap, is a diagnostic and therapeutic procedure which involves insertion of a spinal needle into the lumbar subarachnoid space. This allows for the collection of cerebrospinal fluid or for the administration of medications, for example, spinal anesthesia. It is a vital procedure in the clinical medicine, particularly in neurology, infectious diseases, and anesthesia. A lumbar puncture is indicated in various clinical scenarios. Commonly, it is indicated in the diagnosis of central nervous system infections, for example, meningitis or encephalitis, as well as identifying subarachnoid hemorrhage when imaging is inconclusive. It is also indicated in the evaluation of neurological conditions, for example, multiple sclerosis or guillain barre syndrome, and it helps in measuring of intracranial pressure, and lastly, administration of chemotherapy, antibiotics, or anesthetic agents such as in spinal anesthesia or epidural anesthesia. Understanding the anatomy of the spine is quite important in lumbar puncture, and in an adult, the spinal cord typically ends at the level of the first or the second lumbar vertebra. This makes it safe to perform the lumbar puncture between the third and fourth lumbar vertebra or between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebra. This avoids a risk of spinal cord injury and one of the most important landmarks during lumbar puncture is the typhus line. This is a line connecting the iliac crest and intersecting at the fourth lumbar spine. It helps to guide proper knee placement when you are performing a lumbar puncture. Before proceeding, we need to assess for the contraindications of lumbar puncture. These contraindications include an elevated intracranial pressure due to a mass lesion, which increases the risk of a brain herniation. Also, lumbar vertebra is contraindicated if there is a local infection at the puncture site. If a patient has a coagulopathy or a thrombocytopenia, and in unstable patients. The equipment required include a sterile lumbar puncture tray containing a spinal needle, usually the 22 gauge with a stylet, a manometer, and a tubing to measure opening pressure, sterile gloves, antiseptic solution, and collection tubes typically numbered one to four for sample collection. Patient preparation is key in lumbar puncture and you need to obtain an informed consent after explaining the procedure to the patient, focusing on the risk and the benefits of the procedure. You position the patient either in the lateral decubitus position or in a sitting position with their spine flexed and this maximizes an interspinous space. Ensure baseline vital signs are monitored and you need to assess for contraindications before beginning the procedure. During the procedure, an aseptic technique is used during cleaning and draping of the area. Then you need to process to identify the correct lumbar interspace, that is the third and fourth intervertebral space, or between the fourth and fifth intervertebral space. Then proceed to insert the spinal needle in the midline position with a bevo parallel to the dural fibers. Advance the needle slowly until the cerebrospinal fluid flows. Then you need to measure the opening pressure if needed. And then proceed to collect the cerebrospinal fluid sample in sequential tubes. And lastly, withdraw the spinal needle and then apply steroid dressing. Proceeding to the CSF analysis, Cerebrospinal fluid is typically analyzed across four tubes. Tube 1 is for cell count. Tube 2 is for glucose and protein. Tube 3 is for microbiology studies, including gram stain and culture. And tube 4 is for a repeat cell count to rule out traumatic tap. An optional test may include a cytology, a PCR test, or an oligoclonal band analysis depending on the clinical suspicion. 
Some of the common complications associated with lumbar puncture include a post lumbar puncture headache due to a CSF leakage, and other complications include a bleeding, such as epidural hematoma, infection, nerve root injury, and cerebral herniation if it is performed inappropriately in patients with increased intracranial pressure. Post procedurally, you need to observe the patient for one to two hours. Encourage them to remain in a spine position to reduce headache risk. Monitor for neurological changes and manage any complication that follows. And lastly, ensure to follow up with the CSF results and continue with appropriate clinical care and management. Some of the clinical pals that we encourage our students to know is that you need to always check for signs of raised intracranial pressure prior to performing the procedure. Use an automatic needles to lower the risk of post lumbar puncture headache. Patient positioning and cooperation are quite critical for a successful puncture. And lastly, you need to maintain a gentle, deliberate needle advancement and labeling of the CSF tubes accurately.